everyone, Jason here with another Nano Coaster video. I think in my last video I said that was going to be my last Nano Coaster video of the year. But then a few weeks ago, Coaster Dynamics and Six Flags Magic Mountain announced the availability of Twisted Colossus, a Rocky Mountain construction coaster. This is a coaster that I wasn't sure would ever get done. When Magic Mountain first started doing Nano Coasters, they had four available. So they had X2, Tatsu, Goliath, and Full Throttle. They later added West Coast Racers. Whenever Coaster Dynamics was asked why Twisted Colossus wasn't one of the options, they would say something to the effect of it's basically two coasters, so it would cost twice as much money. Uh, however, it seems that they've had a little bit of a change of heart now. I uh, visited the park just last week and was excited to pick this coaster up. So let's jump right in. Now in the box, we have four things. We have the base plate. We have the sheet with the green track, the station, and the sign. The sheet with the blue track. And we also have the instructions. The instructions for this model are double-sided. Um, you'll also notice that these ones are printed in color. Uh, something that I've only seen on one of their models, the Dueling Dragons one uh, from Universal Orlando, also had color instructions, but this really helps differentiate between the two track colors. Now, as with any nano coaster, the first step is going to be to remove this brown paper from the base plate. This is a step that's oftentimes forgotten about. Uh, the brown paper is on both sides, uh, so we'll just begin by peeling this off. On the front, it's easiest if you just get underneath the little sharp corners here and then peel it off. Uh, the top is going to be several pieces here because um, they have the full track layout engraved into the, the base plate. And so the, the brown paper basically goes within those track layout pieces. On the bottom, it's just one piece that we should be able to pull off um, without having to pull off each individual piece. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly peel off all the brown paper here and then we'll move on to the next step. So there we have the completed base plate. Um, as I mentioned, the top of the base plate has the full track layout engraved in it, the bottom does not. Now one of the first things that I like to do, if you've seen my other videos, is to add an extra logo to the base plate. Um, as with any model, it does come with a little twisted Colossus sign there that has the logo on it. However, I like to have something larger. This is something that's not included in the kit. Um, however, I've cut out the twisted Colossus logo here on a Cricut machine. I've also included an SVG file down in the links below if you would like to cut one out yourself and you have access to a cutter. Uh, but I've just cut it out of this metallic vinyl and I'm now going to apply this to the base plate in an empty space. Now when you do this, you have to find a space on the base plate that's large enough uh, to have the logo and then measure out how large you want it to be. And I'm going to put this right here on the front edge and just press that down into place. So there we have the base plate with the Twisted Colossus logo. Now the next step is going to be to remove the track pieces and the station uh, from these metal sheets. When you're assembling this coaster, it's not having you do all of one color and the other, it's actually having you do go back and forth between green and blue. And so I'm going to cut up all of the track pieces and have them ready to go uh, so that when we move into track assembly, we're not having to stop and cut out other pieces. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly cut these out. I have a pair of wire cutters here that I purchased from Amazon. Um, there's a link to these ones down below, but any wire cutters really should work. And so I'm just going to go around each of these track pieces now and cut it out. And then once we've got these all cut out, we'll move on to track assembly. So now we've finished cutting out all of the track pieces. As you can see, we have three for the green side um, and it is printed with green. Um, we also have four pieces for the blue side. So I have them kind of separated out here so it's easy to figure out which one we're going with. Step one is actually gonna have a start with the end of the green side, if you look up there. Um, so it's gonna be this piece right here. So this slant right here is gonna go down into the final break room. Uh, so we'll pick up the nano coaster set here and you'll see we have this super long tab here. We're actually gonna put that one into place here going right into the station. 
And then as we assemble this, we'll just kind of bend it to match the track layout. Um, so there's actually a pretty sharp turn before this um, with the medium sized tab that we can drop down into place. And then we'll just kind of curve this around uh, to match up with the other slots in the base plate as well. And then here where we have two pieces of track, the green is actually going to follow the outer circle. Uh, the next piece we put in is going to be a blue piece that goes inside of that circle. Once we have the track there in place, we're going to bend over each of these tabs here on the bottom to hold it. Um, with this one being a racing coaster with two tracks running pretty close to each other, you will want to make sure that when you bend the tabs, you don't cover up any other holes. Uh, make sure you only, uh, if you, sometimes you have to bend the tabs one way or the other uh, to not cover up any holes on the opposite side. Um, so we'll be very careful about that and just bend these so that they don't cover up in any of the other holes. Uh, once we have these bent over, We'll also come back to the top of the track again and make sure that it's just perfect on the shaping. Um, we actually got a little bit of a kink here, so I'm gonna bend it a little bit um, into place so that we get proper rounding there uh, on the track piece to follow uh, the track layout. Uh, so there you can see the first piece of green track installed on the base plate. Now moving on to the second track piece, we're actually gonna be doing this blue piece right here. And as I mentioned, this one's actually gonna be running right inside of this. Now, this is where the nano coaster may be a little bit trickier to do. Um, typically, you can put a piece in and then just kind of bend it around. This one, we're going to have to do a little bit of pre-bending here because um, it's going to have to fit within this horseshoe piece. Um, so the lower point here is going to come right over here on this side. And so we're going to just take this piece and start to round it just a little bit here. Um, mostly around this little single peg, um, just so we can put it in there. And then we can finish molding it once it's in place. But once we have that like that, we can start with these two medium tabs on this side and just kind of drop them down into place, round it around the inside turn, drop this last one into place, and then we'll line up this little tab in the middle. As with the first piece, once we get it installed, um, we'll bend these tabs over again on the bottom uh, to hold it into place so that it can't move around at all. And so there you can see our second track piece installed. Uh, so we have the blue track running along the inside of the green track. Uh, you may also notice as you assemble this that you got some little sharp track pieces along the edge here. Um, you can just take your wire cutters typically around that and just kind of trim them off right up against it uh, just to, to kind of make your track smooth. Step three is gonna continue with a blue piece of track. It's gonna be this one right here. Um, you'll notice this groove here on this end. That is actually going to hop over the green track. So you'll be able to see the blue is gonna continue right there where the last one left off. And that groove is gonna go right over the top there. Um, so to do this one, we'll first line up that middle tab, lined up right with the end of the last piece and kind of bend this around to the next tab. And once again, hopping over the green track. And then there's gonna be a longer tab here underneath this hill um, that'll drop down into place. And then finally at this end, there's gonna be a smaller tab um, that we can just slide down in and then bend over the tabs on the bottom. And there you can see the blue track kind of hopping over the green track. Step four is gonna continue on that blue track side um, right where we left off there um, with the high five element that drops down into that side of the coaster. So you have uh, the, the three large hills here. That's where the high five is. Um, so once again, we're just going to continue with the large tab there, pick it up from where the last piece was, and then kind of bend this around the turnaround here at the end. There's a small tab here at the end that's going to hold that um, in place. And we'll continue around uh, to the little bunny hops. Uh, the speed hills that are at the bottom of the first drop. Uh, so we'll put those down into place as well. And then we'll bend over the tabs on the bottom of this one as well. And 
So there we have the blue side of the high five. Um, well, I guess the blue side of the speed hill up into the high five element um, and then back down to where it drops into the, the, the outer side of the, the coaster track. Now step five is actually gonna move back to the green side of the track. Um, so we're gonna use this piece here. Um, once again, the high five element for the green side as well as this groove right here where it crosses over the blue side um, over here. Um, once again, we're gonna do a little bit of pre-shaping on this because the green once again goes inside of the blue. And so we're gonna bend this down here where the high five element is um, so that we can kind of drop that into place. We'll just kind of get it rounded a little bit there. That's where we can come down here and put that end tab into place. And then we'll put these longer tabs into place as well um, to hold the, the rest of the coaster. Um, we'll have to do a little bit of shaping here on it to, to get it to all line up properly. Um, but this is actually gonna hop over the blue track in two places. You'll see there's a groove there as well as a groove there. Uh, so we're gonna have to, once again, line up these little tabs. And then once that's in place, I'm gonna bend over some of the tabs here on the bottom. Now, one thing I have noticed as I'm assembling this coaster, and I don't know if this is a, a quality control issue or a bad batch or something. Um, however, uh, the, the pieces on this one have been a lot more difficult to put into place um, than any on any other nano coaster that I've installed. Um, it's almost like the tabs don't fit as well. Um, when that happens, I grab a pair of pliers and I kind of push the track down in there. Um, however, it's, it's created a few small bends that they won't be a big deal once we've completed the model. They won't really stand out um, as, as being a problem. Um, however, it's something to, to know. Um, and it's something that, like I said, I don't know if uh, Coaster Dynamics changed their manufacturing process um, or what they've done um, that's caused it to be a little bit more difficult. Um, however, in the end, I think the results are gonna be the same. I just know that this is gonna be a little bit more difficult to assemble. Uh, the pieces aren't going in quite as easy as they probably should be. Moving on to the next step, uh, we're gonna be doing the speed hill here at the bottom of the green drop as well as the green first drop. Um, so this one's gonna once again continue right where we were before. Um, so there's a large tab here um, just at the end of this, the last green piece we put in. Uh, so we're gonna drop this large tab down into place. Um, this kind of shows you a little bit what I mean. This piece, this, these long tabs usually fall right in. Um, however, this one's not falling in super easily. Um, but at the bottom of the first drop, um, there is a turn, so we're going to bend it there and put the large tab um, that's underneath the first drop down there into place. And then there's also one down here at this end. So there we have the green side complete. If you haven't ridden Twisted Colossus, it's actually a Mobius coaster. And what that means, so the old Colossus was a racing coaster with two loading stations, um, the coaster raced and then you came back in, so you only rode one side at a time. Um, when they did Twisted Colossus, they set it up so that you'd ride both sides. So you actually start on the blue side in the station and you go through one lap, and then when you get to the end, it switches to the green track at the bottom of the second lift hill, and you do the green lap as well. So you get to do both sides of the coaster, um, which is a really cool feature of it. Um, however, it does not always race. It's definitely a much better ride when it does race, um, but you don't always get those racing rides, especially like last week. I was there on a day that was really slow. Um, the ride was a walk on all day, but they only ran two trains, um, which you really need three to race. And so we never got a race, um, but it's definitely a better ride when you do that. So the final track piece is going to be this blue piece here with the, the lift hill. Uh, there's also these, these little airtime hills uh, that lead into it, as well as the piece that comes out of the station. Um, so there's gonna be quite a bit of bending here on this one. Um, but we'll actually start right here close to the logo. Um, going into the speed hill at the bottom of the drop and drop that tab into place first. And then the large tab on the lift hill we'll put there as well. And 
able to kind of bend these pieces around towards the station, uh, just lining up each of the, the slots as we go around and complete the track layout um, back where the green ends at the station, uh, the blue will begin. We'll bend over once again these tabs on the bottom to hold it into place. So there we have the completed track layout for Twisted Colossus, um, both the green side and the blue side, um, looks really good. The final two pieces to put on here are gonna be the station and the sign. Um, so the station, uh, just like any other nano coaster, is gonna be this little house building. Um, so it comes just like that. You bend it into shape. And then we come over to the station here, we'll drop it into the two slots and bend the tabs over and then ultimately the little sign that comes with it. So as I mentioned, I put the larger logo on there, um, but it does come with this little sign as well uh, that, that tells you the name of the coaster. Um, I like to have something larger, uh, but if you don't have access to a vinyl cutter or whatnot, that's what you get. Uh, so there's the completed kit of Twisted Colossus from Six Flags Magic Mountain and Coaster Dynamics. The kit sells for $35 at the park um, or from merch.sixflags.com. Um, ultimately, a pretty simple layout to put together. However, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there were, appears to be some issues here with the, I don't know if it's the cutting of the layout um, or something that they've done in the manufacturing that's different from the other kits that has made this one a little bit more difficult to get the pieces down into place. Ultimately, I think it looks great though. Um, the, the, the model turned out looking really nicely. Now, the last thing that I like to do is something that's not included in the kit and that's to add a felt bottom to it. So here you can see a uh, piece of felt. We've already cut out one nano coaster from this, uh, but I also checked and Twisted Colossus fits on this as well. So I'm actually gonna line this up right here on the felt, and then grab a pen and just trace around uh, the coaster here. So typically I like to line the coaster up with one of the, the large flat edges of the felt. However, with Twisted Colossus, the way it is, I had to do it in an angle, um, but I was able to line that up actually with the straight edge on the previous coaster that I cut out, um, which makes it a little bit easier. Uh, once you have it like that, you simply just cut around inside of the marking. We want it a little bit inside so it doesn't completely cover the bottom. We want to leave just the edges blank, otherwise it sticks out a little bit. Uh, but this makes it a little bit easier. This felt is available from Amazon. Uh, it's just an adhesive felt. Uh, makes the bottom of the model a lot nicer. Uh, so I'm just gonna continue cutting this out. there we have our piece of felt. Now, as I mentioned, uh, it makes the bottom a little bit nicer. And the way it does that is you'll notice that they have all these tabs here on the bottom that we've bent over. If you slide that around on a surface, it can cause it to get scratched up. Um, the adhesive felt will cover that up um, to give us a smooth bottom so you don't have that, that rough scraping like that. To apply it, I start down here with the, the narrow end and I'm just gonna peel off a little bit of the paper backing here. Not a ton of it, um, just enough to expose some of the felt. And then we'll put the nano coaster on top of it, make sure we get it all lined up properly so that it's completely covered and then press down on that. We can then grab the paper backing and just kind of peel the rest of that away. And then we'll just use the edge of the table here to help us apply it. Um, so I'll just put this down here, grab it underneath with my hands to help make sure it stays lined up. The, the felt is kind of flexible, it's stretchable, so you still want to guide it and make sure it lines up with the bottom of the coaster. Um, but there we have the adhesive felt bottom added to it so the tabs are no longer exposed. You can slide this around on a table. Um, once again, the felt and the logo are not included, uh, but everything else is. So that's Twisted Colossus from Six Flags Magic Mountain, Rocky Mountain Construction Dueling Coaster. Um, really cool ride. Great model. Looks very accurate to the actual thing. A um, little bit difficult to put together because of the, the way the base plate was cut out. Um, but nothing you can't get around. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below. If you didn't like it, that's okay as well. If you want to see more Nano Coaster videos or other videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Feel free to comment down below. I believe that this will be my last Nano Coaster video for a while as I don't have any more in my backlog and I don't have any other trips planned for a while. 
Um, but if there's anything else you'd like to see, make sure you comment down below. Um, if I do happen to get another model somewhere along the way, I'll make sure that I put together a video for that as well. Um, but once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.